Hi, everyone. Our final episode for season two. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And we have the bestest, one of my favorite new people in my life right now that are going to take us and finish up our season. Um, super, super excited. But first, I'm Siri Sirivas Verdejo, and this is the Choosing a Different Future show. Thanks for checking in with us. Thanks for all of your comments, for you sending in all these great ideas for people to be on our show, for just following us for all this time. If you've gotten to this point, you've probably been watching a couple, if not all of the episodes, and super, super grateful. Super, wow, this has been an amazing journey and amazing ride with you all. And right now, today, we have Caroline Morris, and she's in Scotland. <laughs> How do I know Caroline? Because she's amazing, and I try to find all the amazing people all over the world. And on top of that, she was connected to me through Sailor Shining Star, who was also on our show in season one. You might remember that. If you didn't check out that episode, go check it out on the website. And so Sailor introduced me to Caroline, and she knew that we would be total buds right away, and she was correct. <laughs> and part of that is because just her energy is amazing. But on top of that, Caroline is creativity, chaos, magic, art on two legs. And added like a ton of joy to that as well. <laughs> She's been expressing herself through art since childhood, um, using a variety of mediums. We're going to talk about all that. She likes to play. She likes to explore. She likes to really invite people to different possibility with her art. And she honors what's going on with them and all the different energies around them through her art. I love, love, love her artwork. We're gonna get to see some of them today as we're chatting, but please go and check out her all of her websites. Like, there's really, it's, there, she doesn't have any one style. That's the other thing you're gonna see. It she goes all over the place because it's really about, well, what's actually gonna create more when you see her work, you'll get what I mean. And we're gonna talk to her and pick her brain and her being and her body about all the different ways that she creates with art and with her awareness of energy. She's a therapeutic facilitator and she holds the space for people to create in a way that's meaningful, that's effective for them individually and anyone else that they're connected to. So that's just, it's, that's just a little bit of her. We're gonna talk and ask her a ton more questions, but Caroline, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And can I ask the other Caroline to come in? <laughs> I recognize that one. <laughs> you're like, is that me? It's funny because, yeah. you know, you're not the first person to mention that. Like, you're, when you're so used to giving and being this gift and this invitation for other people, when people acknowledge you for it and they talk about you and introduce you, you're like, is that really me? Like, I get it. I've been on other shows and I'm the guest. And it's mm -hmm. kind of surreal. <laughs> It is. It, you're right. It is. It's like, really? Do I? Am I? Well, oh, well, I suppose I might be. <laughs> that, yeah. and it's only a little bit. You're that and so much more, my friend. And so thank yeah. you for being here. Um, thank and you for asking. <laughs> you're welcome. And hopefully our chat here will, will help you also acknowledge for yourself how you're a gift in the world, how you're just this amazing contribution. Um, so you talked about how you've been playing with art since childhood. So how did that look like? Where did you get started with this? Um, well, probably, I'd like to say, like my mum was an art teacher, so art was around, and my dad was creative also. Um, I can't really remember. I just remember playing with anything, like leaves in the garden to make a shape, you know, like some of the sort of more environmental art, sewing things, creating things for my mum when I was little. And it wasn't always painting or things. It might be I don't remember I don't remember different things I made and then I did the same for my daughter like Christmas she makes some crazy doll or something that's got hair all over the place and it you know all these things I can and I oh, I see that when I am in that zone there's very little will you know really rock my boat it's like I'm in a space that is just so much joy and I know a lot of the time what we say from an energetic point of view when you're being the peace and the joy and the expanse, you're truly being yourself. And that is part of what I get when I go in the zone. Like time goes like, oof, it's gone. Oh, damn, I've got to meet dinner. Or maybe I should have something to eat because I'm just about falling down. But whatever it is, and it's really annoying. There's only supposed to be 24 hours in a day, I have to say. 
<laughs> but when you're um, in this yeah. space, it looks like you're actually like time isn't even relevant to you. And so it isn't relevant. It isn't. And it isn't. And it's funny because even as a child, I hated watches. I hated it. And it's, it's interesting, the more you realize that time is a construct and it's not real. I get it because kids are so aware. I mean, you, I know that you work a lot with children. Um, and it is about allowing children to know what they know without dampening that too. Mm -hmm. What I love about what you and Sailor also bring, but also I'd like to bring more of that myself with kids and looking at possibilities with that too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I, I get right now just my awareness of it. The kids would be like, yes, yes, please. More of that. <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday. Can we just do that yesterday? Um, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's true. Like I, I get that, that when you are like not wanting to be around clocks, like I can't even wear watches and no, I, no, I, I to judge myself for it. And now I get that there's so much energy running through me that I just mess up the watches. So the, and it's like, yeah. also I have such an awareness of time that I usually don't even need to look at a clock or a watch to know around what time it is and how much time I have left before I have to get in the car to drive somewhere else. Um, yeah. And it's the, the willingness, a lot of the kids I work with are, have that capacity as well. So it's so cool that you mentioned that with, with your art. I wonder, have you ever created anything that played around with and, and actually demonstrated time in your art pieces? No, no, that's really interesting because my daughter um, brought my attention to steampunk stuff. Yeah. So I had a cupboard full of stuff, including a, a, a box or a jar of like watch parts, which has yet have not been used, but they are on the sort of chaotic flow list or whatever I have. And, and one of these days they'll be used. If they're not used for that, they'll maybe be used for a dragon scales or something. Who knows? I love both of those ideas. Whatever yes, you do too. with it, please keep me posted. I would love to see that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, um, gosh, so what are the, all the different mediums that you have played with so far that are that are your current ones that you're playing around with? Um, well, at the moment, I've done quite a lot of channeling again. Um, so that's pastel quite a lot, although I've done stuff in watercolor pencil and sketches, uh, pixie portraits, and just channeled like somebody, if somebody gives you free, you know, if you like free, a free invitation into their world, I have no idea what's going to show up. So I guess that's where I'm stepping into the adventure of the future, which is the unknown. Because I, I don't have a starting place. I, you know, when I used to draw and paint, there was a starting place. I've always liked, enjoyed figures and um, figurative art. Um, but with what I'm doing just now, I notice there's not always, well, certainly for the channel, I can start something and then I'll smudge it all and then start drawing into that and over that. So I'm doing quite a lot of that. I've just finished um, a pack of fairy oracle um, cards um, and a colouring book, um, which are, again, very much fantastical creatures and um, relating to that. And I'm finding that that side of me I'm allowing to come forward in a way that in the past I fitted in a lot more or I thought I fitted in. Uh, I have to say that one of my girlfriends um, who also does access roared with laughter at me when I said um, something about fitting in. She just roared and I couldn't see it. And you asked and, and you've asked before like when did I see that I was different? I haven't till recently. How oh. is that? And I mean this year. That's how crazy. You do, I think the thing is you don't really, no matter how much we get pulled in about how we look or how we don't look and what we do and what we don't, personal, really looking at you, you as you is really quite tricky, if impossible, because you are what you are as you are it. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're on the um, path already. You're like, what do you mean? I, I have to point and look at my feet. Like I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The other thing I'm doing at the moment is, what I'm still trying to do is I'm doing a water horse, which is actually behind here, which is about that's Well, you can't see. It's not a fisherman's tail, people. It really isn't. It's about five foot. And it's a, a horse with them um, based on chicken wire with muslin and paper mache and built up. So I'm looking at doing more of that, but it's, taking a long time because I've kind of my attention span I'm playing with a short attention span and loving it if you like <laughs> here and half an hour there works really well for me because I don't labor something you know mm. it's like even even in a commission 
which I have several just now in watercolour, um, I'm actually better doing like half an hour and then going to do something else and going back because it keeps it kind of fresh for me and I get yeah. it and I have my enthusiasm with it. Um, oh, and I wonder if that's actually something that people could choose to do with their lives. Like that, I, what, yeah. one of the many things that I'm getting from, from what you're saying is this, there's a level of play with how you create <laughs> art. There's definitely a play, but it's also like, you know, you're saying, oh, I didn't really see myself as different until recently. And like, what if that wasn't required? Like sometimes if you're not judging yourself, like, I think that's mm. when it's helpful to know that you're different because you're not trying to be somebody else. Um, but if you're willing to be you and play and it not be really significant, whatever creatures come up in your artwork, whatever energies come up, whatever people say to you as you're channeling and, and that you're receiving from them and their realities. Okay, cool. But if at the same, at, so what if you could do all that? You've already created all this stuff without acknowledging how different you are. And then when you get to see, oh, wow, I'm really different, you get to have even more. But it's not that you couldn't have created all these amazing things without that acknowledgement. It's just that, okay, how many more doors are going to open up for you with that? And so just to clarify, so you're talking about access, because not everyone that watches this is, um, knows about access consciousness. So access is a short, the short word for access consciousness, which is a system of tools um, some of them hands-on, some of them verbal that both Caroline and I play around with and that we you know each other from, there are a lot of mutual people that also use access consciousness tools. We're both access bars and access facelift facilitators and we play with a lot of the tools in our day-to-day -day life. Like, I don't think we, there's a day that I don't use the tools. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They have lots of tools, but they are amazing too. Yeah, this is one of a bunch of different things that are in our in our tool belt. And then the fantastical. So you might be thinking that she's talking about fantastical with the F, but she's actually talking about fantastical with the PH, which is a project that both of us are a part of right now, where me and Sailor Shining Star are traveling around the world, facilitating different classes, some of which are access consciousness classes, and, and many have other energies, like shamanic energy, um, Tantra, Law of Attraction, the tarot cards that she mentioned that she's creating too, um, art and, and singing and just a lot of different body work. So, and that's just a couple of them. And, and Caroline has been a pivotal part of our crew in, in taking our, this tour of classes around the world. Um, we'll definitely be in Scotland to facilitate classes there. But one of the <laughs> One of the things of what we talk about fantastical creatures is acknowledging that we are fantastical creatures. We're that difference. Mm. We're the ones that are willing to play with the seen and unseen and be fantastic in all of us while doing it. And that's mm. totally what I get. You're, you're such a fantastical creature, my friend, because you're absolutely doing that with how you already been choosing to play with art. And definitely just in the, in the few months that I've known you, how you're choosing to play with art in a different way and ramping it up even more. Like you're, that acknowledgement of how different and how fantastical you've always been has just really changed your art. Like in what you're choosing with your business, it's amazing. So <laughs> I can see that. Have, what, are you, what have you noticed has shifted um, the more that you're acknowledging how different you are and how your process with art is a bit different than other people? I would say it's quite, it's funny you say that because recently I was thinking, well, if I can create what I've created with the amount of judgment of myself, which I have had, uh, I mean, nobody else is like that, obviously. Yeah, um, right. No one else that's listening to this. No, absolutely. <laughs> You're not allowed to be like that. How dare you? <laughs> um, you know, if I can do that with that and I'm dropping it and I play with tools, as you say, access, but there's other tools as well. And sometimes just sitting down scribbling or using, uh, you know, I used to get out like um, an old scrapbook and just take out the emotional charge on a pencil or a piece of charcoal or whatever it is. And that might just be one of those fantastical creatures around. But, you know, whatever that is and get it out. And then what else can I do now? So for me now, I've recently invited a lady to be a coach for me because I get... For me, I'm kind of, I can be all over the place. I can be, I can be organized, but it's not really fun for me. And I get really frustrated when I don't have time and space to paint and draw. That gets to me and I'm not who I can be. 
it's that thing of you kind of when you find the fun and the joy that works and plays and, and works for you, then you become more of who you are. And excuse me, I've got a little fantastical creature here meowing away. Sorry. <laughs> so when you're that, it makes such a difference. So I see that I'm choosing more. I'm not getting drawn into my past stories. I'm not allowing myself to settle for less which I know that I have done and I'm allowing myself to see that and I've actually ha had it I suppose that the bottom line is I'm allowing it I actually see that I can contribute hugely in the world and that in itself is just exciting and a bit gobsmacking the way I've been received recently and that's the bit that I think is the big difference um I had a, a coaching call with somebody recently and she's just a honey and she said to me, yes, Kat. And afterwards I said, but you know, there's a lot of this happening in this. You know, for me to have the kind of where I don't actually say anything is a bit different. And I feel gobsmacked. And she said, yes, because you now, instead of looking to what you can give and what you can inspire others to, you're actually willing to be received. And that was just, that's shaken my tree, my world and everything else. And that is only in the last two or three weeks. So, you know, it's just ongoing and it's exciting. And I'm so, so excited about your tour and you coming to Scotland and, and what else will that create for, for all of us? And it's not just the people on the tour because it's like the butterfly's wing in one end of the planet is the tsunami at the other. So what are we all creating by our choices? Yeah, I love that. I hadn't, I hadn't heard that expression before about the butterfly wing and the tsunami. And that's, and yet that's so, that's so what I've known is true. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. It's just like, yeah. Like you one choice here, it totally reverberates out everywhere. And that's actually really matches the energy of, of this show too, is, yeah. is how each of us, when we're choosing what actually works for us, that may be different than what's been projected and expected of us. Oh, it totally changes, not just our world, but the whole world. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. the thing is, it, it's interesting. I put it this way, although I, the words are probably not quite accurate. In a sense, when we allow ourselves to shine and to put our head, up, you know, to ramp it up or whatever way you wish to put it, we actually become, in a sense, a permission. That's possibly not. That's quite a harsh word, but a permission or an inspirational for somebody else, and then it becomes like a leapfrog. You inspire me. Um, I inspire somebody else and then we leapfrog because it's like wow I love what you're doing I'm having I'm going to tweak my whatever because I'm going to have more of what you've got in the way that works for me because there's no point me doing it the way somebody else does it because that's really not necessarily inspiration mm -hmm. and people can perceive that even those that aren't necessarily playing with energy a lot or tell themselves they're not aware of energy when they probably mm -hmm. are way more aware of it than, they, than oh, they're yes. acknowledging yeah it's they can still perceive when it's like, it's like a wonk and it's like this isn't yeah. really work what do you, who are you trying to be right now you're not really you're performing instead of really being you um yeah nice one so mm -hmm. did you ever catch yourself doing that with your art where you were because some people use especially my dad's an artist he was an art teacher as well funny enough and i didn't know that about your dad so that's that's really hilarious and um the I remember he was talking about when you're in school as an artist, they have you imitate all these different art yeah. styles and things to get familiar with all these different styles. And then hopefully over time, you find what's actually going to work for you, what's true for you. Did you have that in your journey with art? Um, well, I did go to art school, which I hated, I have to be honest. Um, <laughs> Where'd you go to art school? <laughs> yeah, I hated it. I hated it. I really did hate it. I think I... I I suppose it's I didn't like school much either. You know, I mean, I didn't. I did it. I did my utmost um, to do my best, etc. But I didn't enjoy it. Um, I would say that yes, I have looked at different styles. I've looked at different artists. I know that um, I have a lot of different styles, and it's really funny because sometimes I just think it's just erratic. You know. I'm doing this and I'm doing that or whatever. But somebody, in fact, it was actually my business coach said to me, yeah, but your energy flows in it. And she's, I recognize it. And that was, you know, that was a huge gift for her to give me that, to say that to me. I really, at the time I was ready to receive it. And it was like part of my world melted with that comment. 
it was beautiful because you know I, I play with things I, I get that actually part of the capacity or gift or whatever you want to say it for me is actually playfulness and it's really hilarious because as coming up with things I used to think you know what I have to read the non-fiction books because I don't have time for the, the sort of fictional books and the fun stuff and how much often does the fun stuff gift you so much more that's my perspective now it wasn't then and it's funny like I'm growing into me or something like that and it's so fucking fun sorry <laughs> it's okay it's just it's just so much fun and that is yeah and I know when I'm being me because I'm usually laughing I'm usually daft as a, a nut job or whatever you want to see <laughs> and it doesn't matter what I bring it's like that might work okay it's not working for me now I'm going to do something else so yes the styles come in yes I look at other people's styles and I get that I kind of don't download it energetically as to what will work for me. And I can see something, I think, oh, wow, that's a bit like that. Okay. Because recently I was playing with, um, it was the first time I hadn't really used acrylics before. I've used oils. And I've used mixed media like gesso, which is like plaster, as a base to give me texture underneath. Things. And, and I typically like when I play with paint, I like to do um, a thin wash of turps and let the oil and the turps run. So you get... Again, I suppose you get the, the uncontrollable because the patterns come and you can't say, but you can use that in the background to make something really different. Um, and I found one of my, in fact, it was uh, a close friend and I said to her, you use acrylics, don't you? She, yeah. I said, I haven't used acrylic. I don't know why I went into somebody else's world. Of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can use this. And there's quite a lot, or there has been recently quite a lot of um, big eyed art based on a lady in the 60s uh, and I hadn't heard there's a film and it was I can't remember what it's called I think it's, it might just be called Big Eyes and it was really a lady that did a lot of work and her art sold immensely well and her husband actually passed it as his so I thought oh. I'm gonna have this I'm gonna have a bash at this and I thought I'm going to try acrylics because oils as you know take longer to dry no matter what that's what my dad used most of his work. Yeah. He's a surrealist painter and it was always oh, oils. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they are lovely to, to work with. They're not so great fun. I mean, I have kind of brought my art inside. I used to have a studio outside in the garage. I've kind of brought it into the back room now because it's more space and it's great for me. The light's good. But um, using the acrylic, I loved it. And I started to do some things that way with big eyes. So yeah, I've tried a different style. Then I go back to do something else. And, and mm -hmm. it's, you no, know, I don't, it, I love, I don't know whether I heard something, and it might have been even you saying something today. It was like when you go for the energy of all the things. I, no, it wasn't. It was something else I heard today. It's like, I have so many ideas. I have so many ideas, as we do. And it's like, but if I go for the energy of those ideas, it's like they speed, it speeds up the way I put pictures and the images on. Yeah. They also, I don't get so frustrated when I don't get them all done. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because you're actually following the rhythm of your awareness. And yeah. so it might not be the time to have it all done. It might actually want a bit of a wait and a pause, yeah. like the build up the anticipation to see what else shows up within the canvas, within the paper. Um, and it's funny because my dad, he did all the oil and I've completely avoided oil and I've done acrylics. And I was, yeah. actually, I started more, I, I do a lot of embroidery and that was my wow. way of, of expressing myself. And then I started doing oil pastels mm -hmm. and then I went to acrylics, but I still haven't touched the oil, the oil paint. And I'm wondering now, given our conversation, like maybe when I'm in Scotland, we can have a bit of a play. Yes, why not? <laughs> it's really mm -hmm. funny. You know, you're saying that my mom used to say that she didn't like oil pastels at all. And dreadful to use so I didn't really use them and then I um, treated myself to some Sinelli pastels uh, oil pastels and they were just oh seduction in a box um, I just feel that way about I mean art art supplies and crystals are like candy for me it's like sweeties <laughs> that's my kind of my bling and art the colors in art you know I mean at the end of the day you're talking originally like Round lapis lazuli and things are your colors. 
So it's not really surprising. It's not such a knowledge anomaly of even where I go with things. Um, but I found that, you know, if you use, sometimes I would say that if you use uh, like the student quality, you don't get the richness. And maybe that's just, just me, I, I don't know. But when I used the Sinelli, it was like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to use this. And I'm really good. And I want to use it more and more. And I'm not and familiar with that. How is that spelled? S-E-N-N-E-L-I-E-R. And I, th I think, I could be wrong, that Sinelli as a company um, may have been, I know that Picasso asked the company to develop oil in a stick for him. Mm. Not sure if that was the company, but I do know that Picasso, Pablo Picasso, wanted that created for his art. And I, oh, I don't know. It's, it's like when you start... Start, you know, like pastels is one. I love using pastels, soft pastels. And it's like you can use different brands and you find what works for you. And sometimes it's a mixture and sometimes it's a mixture of surfaces, yeah. a velvet surface or, a, or like a muton uh, paper. And it's different things will create different things. We both know this. People know that. Um, and it is a lot of the playful experimentation of that with different things. I mean, I've got like about... I think four different types of pastels and my biggest uh, probably my favorite are Sinelli and I have a French one but I can't remember Giro I think they're quite they're probably more expensive and there's others that I'd like to try um but yeah it's a total seduction for me part part of the play is the seduction and the sexualness of it because it actually I get my body loves to play Partly because a lot of the colors end up on my body rather than on what it's supposed to be on. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Um, and that's, that's been a part that part of with, with oil pastels for me that the shift was like with embroidery, it's so neat. It's so focused. Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you're just here and here and it's, it's really only this parts of your hands and your eyes. And it's like this, there's a dialogue there for me. And I love the sound of the, the of the string being pulled. And it's like, depending on it's what fabric, because sometimes I do it on plastic like netting, mm -hmm. um, I can show you uh, yeah, for and things, and so um, and it makes a different sound. So you're you're actually creating a music with each pull of the thread, and then I go to oil pastels, and then my fingers are all dirty and my face, is <laughs> and it's like, and it was in for me who had so much difficulty letting go of control because there was so much that was a havoc and drama and trauma in my life that I was tight fisting a lot of aspects of my life. But I couldn't do that with oil pastels and it actually still be fun. And so yeah. since I wanted it to be fun, I had to let go of the control and see what showed up. And then it actually created so much more space so that I could go back to the crazy of my life the rest of my yeah. life. With, yeah, but it's, yeah. Oh, with more yeah. ease. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny you talk about, I think my sense is that when you're a creative, if you like, I mean, I used to do... Um, paintings on silk using Guta. And I, uh, because I worked as an um, anatomical artist, some of the people in work asked me for commissions like for um, scanning electromicrographs where you've got tiny structures, but they're blown up. And to me, they became like a design. And years ago, I made my mum a Japanese kimono in silk. And I had giant, you know, the crocodile clips and the whole thing and these huge frames. And I had to get rid of them from the flat if, if ever she came over. And it was a little bit crazy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and recently I've also done, um, you were talking about kind of um, sewing or embroidery things. I haven't particularly embroidery, but I have started to do, like, um, organza headpieces and different things. Mm -hmm. um, burning That's organza. a whole different texture. Talk about a different noise that would show up. Absolutely. And, I mean, I... <laughs> quite fun being an arsonist as well as I burn it with a flame. <laughs> I do love fire. I totally get that. Like I have, I haven't done the, um, the welding yet. And because no. I know that I would probably become addicted to it because I just love fire so much. Um, <laughs> doing fire performing and, and all that is, that was a part of it for me was that roar of the fire. Like, Oh, I loved it. Mm. So Given that process with you, I see some of your pieces behind you here. What are the, some of the mediums? What, what materials did you use to create what, you're, what you have well, right now? That one is just a small, can you see that? Yeah. That is just, that was originally, it's just on a piece of hardboard. 
Um, and I think what I started with that is I just started with gesso. So I just built up and played with it. And then because I kind of, not that anybody would guess, love the mermaids and the horse thing. I think Surprising. I, I'm shocked. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you're sitting down. Um, <laughs> I just started to build it. Now that is oil and then it's varnished afterwards. Um, hang on a minute and I'll... So when you said varnish, it's like actually you just put that on top, the varnish, and it's yeah, sealed once it once it's dry. Once it's, it's dry. not an epoxy though. Yeah, hang on a sec. Got it. Cool. Wow. So as we're waiting for Caroline to come back, you guys can see some of her other pieces there. So that's what that you have seen before, which is my sort of goblin queen on her mushroom. That was oils. And in that one, if you can see at the background, part of the background was streaky. You can, I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. Just because I just dripped it down and then painted into it. So do you usually find yourself, and, I've, and I've, when I, I have so many different artists as friends, I'm very lucky that way. It's such a fortunate way to live my life. Um, do you have a preference or do you notice that you often tend to go from the background forward or from the foreground back? Um, I usually, nowadays I think I quite, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing something like this, which was done age, no, this is done years ago. This was done based on the work of Susan sedun Boulay, who's more your type, your part of the world, an exquisite shamanic artist from my point of view, and a real inspiration, a wonderful draftswoman. Um, and she did a lot of things with ink. You know the way sometimes school children, what you do is you, you do like a rainbow of colours on a ground with black ink, so you can't see anything. Yeah. And then you scratch through it. You scratch through it, so you get yeah. the colour. And you don't know the colours are random because you don't know where they are. So that was playing a bit with that and it's still to be built up. Um, so that again, I suppose, I am starting from the background, if you like. But something like that, which is the wide eye thing I've talked about, is my first attempt at, can um, you see that? At, yes. As acrylic. That's very different. Very different. So that's acrylics. Um, yeah, hang on. I love it. It's still the play is there. And so was that one, that acrylic, was that forward back? Um, that's really front. I started with their faces. Really. Yeah. It's, I can see how that, yeah. and it pulls you back because like, you're yeah. watching it. it even and I haven't, haven't finished that one yet. Um, the ones I've, had, I've been doing a lot recently um, are more, let me see if I can get this. These are channel pieces. These are the adventure because I have no idea what's coming up. None. You know, if you start off with something like this, which I, I did, one I did earlier, as they say, and it's a rough, I don't know how that'll go. Is oh, that the, with chalk? That is with chalk. That's with my um, assorted pastels, if you can see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to see what else it is here. All right, so while you're pulling up some of these examples of the of the channeled pieces, mm -hmm. I'm wondering. So when when someone asks you, "Hey, I'd like you to ch to create a piece of art for me and channel it for me," yeah. what what's that process look like? Like, do you ask them something as a being? Do you you no. talk to their body? No. Like, how does that? I, I just it's funny. Somebody... Are they with you when you're doing it? Are they somewhere else? No. No, they don't have to be. Um, I've spent, I mean, I said earlier to you, but um, for a while I worked with a shaman up in Aberdeen, which is about four hours drive from here. Mm -hmm. Over a period of six months, he said one, one evening, well, what are you doing on Saturday night, can I? And I said, well, not, not a lot. And he said, well, be in your studio, tune into what's going on up here energetically and draw. And that's what I've done. And that's the way I do it. If you ask me, do something for you. You don't have to be with me. I just ask. I suppose I don't necessarily verbally ask, but I ask. And shows up, shows up. And it's it's like, you know, it's like a hundred million questions are probably going on, but I have no idea. And I just keep moving my hands. And it's kind of asking my hands to play with the chalk and the chalk to contribute to me. And playing with molecules in a way. I suppose that's the nearest I can put to define it. Because I, I can't honestly tell you what I do other than I sit down and, and then I think this is this isn't working. And I notice that when my head gets in the way, you can forget it. 
you can forget it in channeling. You just forget it. It's not going to happen because I'm starting to oh, should this be this? No. This happened no to should. me this week. It was somebody. <laughs> There's I know, no I know. Absolutely. Yeah. It just, oh, forget it. And I started again and it was easy. And I can't, I wonder if I've got the one I got. It was quite amazing what came. I don't know if I've got it here. I don't think I have. But um, it, was, it was really interesting what showed up compared to the scribble that I had done at first because I gave up. I mean, I thought, I can't do it for her. I can't do it. I haven't got it there. But anyway, and it, and it worked out and it was quite a powerful piece. And I said to her, you know, it was really challenging. She said, I wonder if it's because I'm changing so much just now. Who knows? I don't know. Might be. Not really any idea about that. So, yeah. Do you ever get asked to channel and do a piece of art to address a certain issue in someone's life or to answer a particular question? Like if they're looking for clarity for a certain aspect of their life? I used to, to work that way, but, but energetically. But it's interesting. You see, I have a, if somebody has chosen to have a channel piece for that, they haven't said. Mm -hmm. so it, I know that I did one recently. And she said to me, oh, put it, now, I actually have this one here. I know I have. And she was over the moon and she said, this answers a lot for me. Um, and I mean, I don't know. She didn't say what it answered. She mm -hmm. just and that's that one. Wow. And these, are, these, are, these, were, these were just done on, on like, um, you know, it's just, just a, a fine piece of paper. Um, this was some part of a group that I was part of, and we were doing some things and gifting and things. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I also do them as part of what I offer as an artist. And stepping into more of that, and it's so much fun. I mean, it really is. It looks it, it look, and they're just gorgeous. Um, so I'm wondering too with this, so how is this, how have you used your capacities, your obvious gifts with art to, to then deal with your day-to-day -day life, the things that go on with you, like what you're doing with your business? Like how, does the, how do those play with each other? Um, it's funny, the, the thing that's popping, and I'm not sure if it's a direct answer or not so if I'm weaseling do do bring me back <laughs> funny when I when I do art sometimes and probably I I have you started to use the fairy oracle deck but I used to find that when I was pulling out the art I did it always speaks to me it tells me something like I remember doing one and it's funny I should think this is the one that's popping just now when I did the shamanic the 90 over the six months sketches and things Interesting, when I did the paintings, and I've only done about six of the paintings in oils, the original sketches to me seemed to fade. It was like the energy transferred. And when I looked at those paintings again, it was interesting how they were relevant to my life at that moment. And I get that probably what I'm doing at that, whatever I'm doing with whoever I'm doing, there's a relevance to me within that also, if I'm willing to look at it. Mm answer what you have. yeah I mean if if I'm it almost seems like through your art you're actually realizing how connected you are with everyone else and the, and you get to see what's actually true for you in that in each piece and in each interaction each creation yeah. and what's also not relevant to yes. you yes yeah, yeah, not everything's yeah. going to be relevant to you but you get those little nuggets those gems yeah. that are like ooh, this is for me too thank you yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely but I mean that's it isn't it I mean you know people talk about I used to think when I worked as a facilitator and things people talk about whatever they're offering whether it's reflexology or massage or whatever it is you do and my point of view is in a sense you come for the person's energy mm -hmm. you get people that would come and they really just wanted somebody to hear them yeah really about what I did and I remember going to one lady when I was doing I can't remember I was doing bioenergy or something and we ended up having a conversation about art. And I don't remember if I was doing art classes. I do have done them from time to time. More based on bringing out something in somebody else. You know, so that if somebody goes away from, from me, my point of view would be that you've got something that you can go forward with and you know you've more confidence or something, which expands right over your life. So when I used to play with energies as a facilitator of energies and whatever I was, if I didn't do art for a while, when I went back or forwards to my art, I always felt as if I jumped 
whether I jumped or whether I just saw more, I'm not sure. Because we all interact and it changes something. But it's like, you know, nobody's there at two in the morning but you, with you. So if you can bring something to people with art or whatever it is that allows them to have more peace with themselves, then to me that's a huge part of, of what we're all about. And the relevance in that is true for all of us, because if more of us were at peace within ourselves, how much, how different would we create a world? Or how different would the world outside be too? Yeah, and that's definitely the world that I'd like to live in. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. We go play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go play. Ride a butterfly or two. Oh my goodness, absolutely. That's so, <laughs> that's right up my alley. That's my jam. I love it. Yeah, I love that too. Thank you so much, Caroline, for showing us your pieces and everything. I get that maybe the next time you come on that we can actually have a bit of a play and you can draw a bit more Ooh, during, yeah. but I love that people get to see some of your pieces, your process, talk about you and just the amazing things you're creating and inviting people to and the world to with your art and with all of your beautiful energy. You are such a gift, my friend. Thank you so much. Well, you know, you don't see it if you don't be it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> You don't. <laughs> so please make sure to check out Caroline's website. We'll include all of the information below in the descriptions. Let us know which of the pieces that she showed here uh, you particularly liked. Um, and maybe we can convince her to do some prints and maybe she'll be able to send it to you wherever you are in the world. Um, but at the same time, if you have any questions for her, go ahead and feel free to message her directly. She is super loves to talk to people about her art and about art in general, about energy and possibility. Yeah, and awesome. um, if you liked her episode, this episode, go ahead and click like for this video, subscribe to our channel, check out the other episodes in choosing a different future.com. Let us know who else you think would be a wonderful guest for our show. Thank you so much for ending the season two with us, Caroline. I couldn't have thought of a better person to end the season with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.